What's up boys, Data782 here with episode 24 of Fixing the Franchise here with the Anaheim Ducks coming off a Stanley Cup championship in year number 7. We've won two Stanley Cups in 7 years. The goal of this franchise mode is to fix the franchise and I believe that that has been mostly done. We are heading into year number 8 and we're going to see if we can get back to back Stanley Cup championships. But before we can do that, we head into the draft. So in the last episode, Sidney Crosby put on a show in the playoffs. Now, this is the plan heading into the draft. Talked with everyone in the comments, all the boys, Michael Bruno Vaselli, Chris Chong. Now, what they are saying is that, obviously, Sidney Crosby, he's going to have to go because at, with a five point, around $5.8 million extension kicking in, I think it's uh, maybe 5.4 even, something around the $5 million range, I cannot afford to keep him on this team, even though he's still a monster. He has bottom uh, six potential. So it's going to start to go down. It's not going to be worth that money. Evgeny Malkin definitely have to let go. I just checked. He wants $7 million, so no chance I re-sign him. AHL top six potentials. He's going to drop big time by next season. Kale McCarr, I really need to re-sign. And aside from that, uh, Cam Fowler, we're probably going to let go guaranteed unless something really changes in his money demands. And then Jakob Slavin. Either I keep him for one more year or I trade him. I'm not sure because he's costing 5.1. It's not that bad. It's actually a pretty good contract, but when it comes time for Sidor and Bickle to want their money, it's going to cost a lot. Goalie situation, I'm just going to see what happens by next year. I'm not going to make a decision now. I'm going to see how Dosal, McKinley, and McLeod grow in the minors, and we'll make a decision at the start of next season. But for now, it's time for the draft, boys. I've went in. I've pre-scouted. I've put marks on who I want to get and who I'd like to aim for, and I'm excited for it. Now, in the first round here, we have Philadelphia's draft pick, around uh, 20, I think, something like that. But what I want to do is draft this guy right here, Ethan Larmour. He is a two-way D, he's six foot five, and he's a big boy who just has some great skills. He's NHL ready, similar to Al McInnes. I'd really like this guy. He's uh, almost guaranteed medium elite. I'd have to move up to maybe 13 to get him, and, but I think he'll be worth it. And so I'm picking at 20, oh boy, 22, 22. And who wants to trade their pick? St. Louis does want to trade their pick at 13. So maybe I could trade up to St. Louis and get that pick. So I'm gonna see what it's gonna cost for me to do that. So Crosby's extension is $5.43 million for one year. I wanted to trade him back to Pittsburgh, but I think I need to do what's best for my franchise right here and try to get uh, St. Louis's uh, first round pick here so I don't really care for picking at 20 seconds so I don't mind trading my first round pick trade hit that with Crosby see if I can pick up another second round pick because there's some good prospects in here probably rejected but let's see what they say a first and a second so 13th and 44th overall for 22nd overall and Sidney Crosby trade rejected okay I don't mind that let's try 1375 106 and 137 quite close to fair value with a seventh, gets it done. Thank you very much. Sidney Crosby, thank you for the Stanley Cup. Good luck in St. Louis, my friend. I hope that you do well. We're going to see a lot of you in the Western Conference. And without further ado, let's start simulating to the pick number 13 so we can get Larmour. Uh, what was this guy's figure name again? Igo Ru from the QMJHL is the first overall pick. An 82 overall medium elite, medium elite playmaker. Very nice for the Islanders. Second pick goes to the Capitals. They get a medium elite defensive defenseman. And Vegas gets a two-way forward, 81 overall medium elite. Uh, man, I'm just going to keep going until the 80 overalls are gone. Just keep going. Sheesh, is a deep draft. Simon Richard, 80 overall. He's a high top six. Picard there to the Canadians. Medium elite. Bishop, medium elite. Sorry, medium top four. Tenel, 81 overall medium elite sniper. Look at this, 17 years old. This guy could have been a top three pick. Seventh overall, the Canadians got an 81 overall medium elite sniper. Sheesh, that's crazy. Well, let's simulate to our pick now at number 13. And he is still there, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it dropped off a little bit after that seventh overall pick. But now with the 13th overall pick, we are gonna go and select our man. Ethan Larmour, I believe he's Hungarian, which is a wild nationality. A plus, this, playing in a league, he looks like a big bellow, heavy slap shot. Let's do it. We're proud to select from BK Mlada Boleslav Extra Liga, Ethan Larmour. Welcome to Anaheim. He is 77 overall, medium elite, two-way defenseman. You absolutely love to see that. Look at that. 
good stats, good defense, good skating for six foot five. What a monster. I'm looking forward to seeing this guy play. That is for sure. Now our next pick comes at 54. I'm just gonna sim to the next round. I'm gonna figure out if there's anyone I want to trade up to try and snatch in the second round. After Larmour, we got Laroc Rodriguez, a defensive defenseman. Uh, I don't need another defensive defenseman, so that's okay. And he's also a year younger, which is good, my guy is. Uh, top six, medium elite goaltender to the Coyotes. Medium top six, a lot of 60 overall guys going. At pick 22, they took uh, Lackey, Joey Lackey, a playmaker. Didn't really need that. Uh, okay, we're looking good. Now, in the second round, there are definitely some nice boys over here. Medium top 4D, don't need that. I'm picking at 54, so I could trade up for this guy Osgood, Roger Osgood, brother of Gavin Osgood, maybe, from the Montreal Canadiens franchise mode. Medium top 6 playmaker, AJ Ballard. That's a nice uh, nice build right there, 6 foot 2. Sean Monaghan is similar to two years away from the NHL. This guy Kolosov is a defensive defenseman, 17 years old, and he's a gem, they say. Similar to Matthias Ekholm. It wouldn't be much of a move up. Let's start simulating. Let's simulate maybe let's I'm gonna go to pick 45 and see what they say. So pick 45, this guy Oda just went, medium top 4D, that's a nice player, 76 overall. So at the 45th overall pick, nine picks away from us. Uh, so AJ Ballard would be going next most likely, 17 years old, two years away from the NHL, and he's a good prospect. I could use a, maybe another good center prospect. Uh, I do have a lot of defensemen in the system, but this guy would be something special probably, a little more special than the others. They do want to trade their pick. I mean, if it costs a lot, I'm not going to do it, but that does look like a net. That does look like a nice centerman. So let's see if I can trade 54 with 155 and then like a cheap rookie. Throw in this guy, Albert, low top nine potential. What do you say, San Jose? It's quite close to trade to fair value. Throw in Jarmelson, trade accepted. So I threw in Jarmelson, who's a medium, uh, he's a, a low top 6D, I believe. I don't really, didn't really care for him. Didn't fit in my scheme in the minors either. What was he? Uh, low top 6D, 22 years old, 66 overall. Yeah, so not worried about that. Now with pick number 14 in the second round, 45th overall from the Barry Colts, the Anaheim Ducks are proud to select A.J. Ballard. He is 70 overall, medium top six. Absolutely love to see it. This is why you scout, boys. This is why you have to scout. That is what we like to see. And we continue on simulating. Next picks at pick 75. So before then, there are some good guys here. Omar Drake is low top six. Uh, so I pick around here. I don't think there's anyone that I would trade up for. Yeah, I'm going to probably take that guy Samuelson, actually. Medium elite guaranteed. Yeah, so let's simulate to our pick at pick 75. Okay, another set of Gucci goes back to San Jose. Devin set of Gucci's son, maybe. So now with this pick, I will go ahead and make a little reach for Marcus Samuelson from IK Oscar Mnopshin. He is guaranteed medium elite. He's, I know he's five years away from the NHL, but he has the potential and he has the trade value. 56 overall medium elite. Thank you very much. A left wing playmaker. Don't see that very often. I like that. Next pick is at 106. And before that, do I have anyone marked off that I want to trade up for? This guy is three bars low elite. Six foot five. Big boy. Jakob Markov. Anybody else? This guy for, oh yeah, for sure. Carrie Laminen at 95. He's medium elite offensive defenseman. Absolutely love to see it. This is why you scout, boys. Let's go to pick uh, 95 and trade for that. Also, I wanted to check at the same time, how's Maximilian Setzinger doing over on uh, Washington? I haven't checked in on him in a couple of years since I tra made that trade for, the, for a draft pick. Setzinger, 85 overall, 24 years old, lost a lot of trade value. Still up there, though. How's he been doing in his seasons? Uh, not a big goal scorer, gets the penalty minutes, grinder, he plays on the first line, he'd fit on our fourth line, yeah, he's going to want a contract next year as well. Great defensive category and physical, that's for sure. Even senses. Maximilian Setzinger, he was a third round pick by us. 124, 186, and 199 for 96. Come on, Boston. For a fourth round pick, I only want to move up 10 spots. Okay, move up 10 spots with 106, and then I'll also give you 139. How about that? Come on, that's a great deal. Trade accepted, yeah, that's what I thought. Come on, guys. I gave you Owen Tippett. Come on, cut me some slack. So here at pick, oh, immediately goalie just went. That's cool. Enforcer defenseman right before that. So now at pick 96, thankfully, we're finally here. I'm going to go ahead and take... Oh, no, did he, did he go earlier? No. 
Did he go in the third round? He did. What? Laminin, 50 overall, medium elite. He went to the Blues. Uh, they really reached for him then. He went at 93. He was, he was slated to go at 98 or so. Man, so I wouldn't have even known. I, even if I traded for the for fourth for round four pick one, I would have still missed it. Oh, that's pits. But now I guess I could take one of these goalies here. Uh, Kim Person is a gem, and they say he's gonna be medium elite. So pff, why not? Maybe it was meant to be. Kim Person, welcome to the team, Bello. You are medium elite, 53 overall. Uh, how good was that guy? How much trade value does that guy have now in St. Louis? Ah, oh, look at that. It's so broken. Look at that, all that trade value. You could make turn a fifth, uh, turn a four, guy you draft in the fourth round into an elite first liner. Pick 97. Next pick's at 120. Who else has elite potential so I can, that I can expose over here? Rudolph Mabus, low top six forward. Medium top six forward. Francis Haskins. I'll just go to my pick and take that guy who's uh, Frederick Picard, low elite there. So here at pick 120. Oh, and they take him, low elite. Ah, oh, come on, Toronto. Oh, boy. Okay, round four, pick 27. No one really uh, tempting me that much over here. Maybe this guy, medium top six. But even then, I have another pick right after, eh? Yeah, I pick right after again. I'm going to see if I can just trade this pick to a bad team. See if I can trade my fourth now to Ottawa for their fourth next season. Not too far off. Fourth and a seventh should be able to get it done. Yeah, that's no problem. Not too many guys left I still want to draft here, so I'm happy to move it. They take a Mia, low top 60. Pick 124 now. I guess I'll take this defenseman, Joachim Rene. Maybe he's low top 4. That would be cool. And he is low top 6. Not that bad for the end of the fourth round. Pick 186 now. I should have looked if there was anyone that I wanted to get. I jumped the gun a bit there. But it's okay. I've only already gotten most of the guys that I already want. Now at 187. Don't need any more defensive defensemen, there's way too many. Benjamin Kuplin, maybe he's uh, has some potential, two bars, medium lead. Let's go for him. And he's medium bottom six, yikes. Pick 193 now. I know that there's some people that I want to draft, so now I'll use my last picks to just go after potential. And that is going to be this guy right here for sure, Rickard Verkunin, who's ranked 210, and he is possibly a medium lead goaltender. Uh, there's also this guy I want to get with my next pick after that, so I'll take him first. Maybe he's medium elite. He is medium elite, 57 overall with a round seven pick. You absolutely love to see it, that's for sure. Now I'm gonna try to get Vegas's pick to get that other guy. Shouldn't have traded my other seventh round pick. Why did I trade my other seventh? Shouldn't have done that. Give me my seventh in 2028. I don't know why you would reject that. My guy isn't slated to go into like 200 or something, so let's try to get the Hawks. There you go, seventh, I need to take a pig off my hand. Trade accepted, great. Number 202 now. Go ahead and draft that guy that I was looking at, who has low elite potential guaranteed. Robert Cronwall, a right wing playmaker, and he is low elite, 51 overall. Make sure there's no one else that you want. This was a pretty good draft. Got some decent guys. Could take another few risks if I wanted to, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. I got all the guaranteed, yeah, I'm happy with that. So another good draft in the book, boys as we ended off there. Made a lot of picks, I think. No, not too many. Not as many as usual, at least. And now we head into the re-sign phase. So now what I'm gonna do is do, deal with all the coaching, deal with all the scouts, and I'm gonna re-sign all the minor league guys, and then we're gonna get to where the big boys are, the NHL guys. So like Pacioretty, Pedro Pacioretty, that is. Uh, Makar and all that. So let me simulate a day and get all that done right now. So thus far, I've sent out 12 contract offers. I've released a few people. I've qualified a few people. But I have $17.35 million in the cap. And what I need to get done first is re-signing Kale Makar. So he wants eight years. If I give him six, he wants 12.8. If I give him seven or eight, he wants 12.825. So I might as well just give him exactly what he wants. If I gave him one year, it doesn't really change much. So if I were to give him 12 years, he doesn't want to assign, so that's the issue. I'm gonna try eight years at 12.950 for the first offer. I know it's crazy money, but this guy puts up insane numbers every year, and I think he's definitely worth it. If Genny Malkin, he wants two years at 6.9, definitely can't afford that, release him. And I'm gonna wait, I'm definitely gonna sign uh, Ekman and Pacioretty, but I'm not sure if I sign them or if I qualify them, depending on how much Makar is going to cost and how much Cam Fowler is gonna want. I haven't even looked at that yet, if it's changed at all. 
So, oh, Gilbert Hull, the one of the best head coaches in the NHL. To be honest, I'm not entirely thrilled with the with the role you have offered, but I'll take it. What more do you want? I can't promote you to GM. You're going to have to be the head coach. Do you want to be the owner of the team? I can't do much more for you. So, thanks for si signing on reluctantly. Uh, thanks for signing on reluctantly. Can't even speak, Gilbert. My goodness, all these scouts say yes. Okay. Makar says no for that dollar value, all right. Larmour says yes, very nice. Uh, Nick Henry said no, okay. Atonovic, medium league goaltender, says yes. Tommy Yasu says no. Uh, Drysdale, yes. Anderson, Gouli, Fajimo, Glebov, Madsen, Wyman, Reyes, all say yes, good. So, so even more cap space now, 17.675 with 43 contracts. Go back to all expiring. Once again, Kale McCarr, I'm going to give him eight years. I'm going to try even more. It's going to be worth it. Eight years at 13.15. Uh, Nick Henry said no. I'm not going to bother with him. He's just a guy that I got from free agency. Uh, Tommy Yasu also said no for some reason, so I'll qualify him, and you'll be forced to sign later on. Uh, this guy, Parrish. Scott Parrish, she was a sixth round pick, medium bottom six, uh, 56 points in the U.S. I'm going to pass. I have other people who can fill those spots. Nikolai Filatov, 69 overall, 24 years old. You haven't done anything, so I'll release you. Eric Pierce, seventh round pick in 2020, medium bottom six, 24 years old. I'm going to let you go, Bello. Rudy Yarventi, uh, Roby Yarventi. Bah, he has the potential. I'll qualify him. He'll sign later on. Figure those out later. Okay, so now Nicholas Ekman. Ekman wants two years at 2.275. Uh, three years goes up. So three years keeps him as a U, uh, RFA. He does not want the extension. So I'm going to try three years at 2.450 because then it starts to go up a little bit more. I'm going to see if I can get him for three years to keep him at RFA status. And then for Pedro Pacioretty, our fourth line center, one year, 1.5 is fair. If I go up, he doesn't want much more. So let me try, uh, let me give you three years. Why not? Let me give you three years. Uh, does he want the extension? He doesn't. Why does no one want the extension? We're a great team. Three years at 1.2. How about that, Bello? Advanced today now. More scouts are going to be coming in. Yeah, thank you. Jean Rubida. Ivan Habibulin. Okay. Makar still says no. Pacioretty says no. Ekman says no. Really, huh? Patch ready. Well, actually, I'm not afraid to just qualify both those guys and then match whatever they get. I'm not really worried about that. So I'm going to just focus all my attention on on Makar. Fowler, what do you want, Bella? One year, 4.6. The problem is I don't even know until I sign Makar, so I still have to get that done. Maybe if I could give you six years, since you'll want a little less than six years. And then if I offer you 13.250 for six years, how about that? Uh, Ekman and Pacioretty just got qualified. They want to be pigs. There you go. Noah Gregor had a good season in San Diego. Why not? Hop on board. Studenik's always been good in San Diego. Give him another one-year deal. I believe that's everyone. Yeah, Jan Bednar is qualified. So it's just Makar I'm waiting on, and then that'll determine Fowler. Uh, still doesn't want it. Gregor says yes, and so does Studenic. Unless I let Makar go to free agency and then pay him that same $13 million in free agency, because I doubt he's going to want much more than that. If I try again at 13.350, oh, it's getting it's getting pretty wild now. 13.350, that leaves me with 4.5-ish uh, million, 4.475. Yeah, it's cutting it very close. Fowler, I'm, I don't I don't believe that in that overall either. I don't think it's going to stay. That's the issue. Come on, Kale. Still doesn't want it. So I'm going to let both Makar and Fowler go to free agency. I'm going to try to get them in free agency. I doubt Makar is going to want more in free agency than 13.35. Like, I could probably sign him for that. It's just the algorithms that say, oh, it's June 30th. He doesn't want to sign with you. Kale Makar, 12.975. So I could definitely get him for a little bit more, I think. Sort out the RFAs. Just our uh, UFAs here. So Kale Makar, Steven Stamkos. Where did he go last season, Steven Stamkos? He was on Vegas last year, put up 68 points in 73 games. Good for him. Uh, a lot of nice guys here. Kyle Connor, Casey Middlestat, John Tavares, Alex Texier is a very nice player as well with good potential. Doesn't seem to score much though, at least especially last year. Shane Bowers is a free agent. That's interesting from the, the Avalanche prospect. Doesn't put up many points either. And in the goal, oh, even Victor Hedman's here. And then in the goaltending category, anybody special? Carter Hart, that's a big name. 
Anderson, Caden Primo, Maratsik, he's, he's always in free agency, so is Merz Lincolns. All right, so obviously let's go after Kale McCarr. He wants 12.975 for seven years. If you go to eight, he wants, uh, oh, that's true, seven's the max. So I'm going to give him his max of seven years, and I'm going to offer him 13.4 million dollars at... At eight years, he didn't want it, but for seven years, we'll see if he takes it. Hopefully, he does. I know it's a lot of money, but hopefully 13 point... I don't want to overpay too much, but I really want to make sure I get him as well. Uh, let's go 13.425. Let's try that. 13 point... Is that enough? 13.450 for seven years, Kale McCarr. Come on, Bello. You know you want to sign. Oh, boy. But I can't really sign anyone else until he signs, because that really determines a lot of the money situation. Any good prospects? Not really. Anderson would be a good deal at uh, $4.4 million. So would uh, Primo with that potential as well. But let's just simulate a few days now. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to stop to make sh uh, rehire any scouts or coaches who may be there. I need to hire an AHL goalie coach. So I'm going to quickly pause to go and do that. I need to hire an NHL goalie coach and an AHL goalie coach. So I'll go to NHL assistant coaches and see who has a good team fit. Oh, 72. Carolyn Humphreys, 72% team fit. Okay. All right. I guess that's going to be 72. Not going to get much better than that. Carolyn, welcome to the team. I don't like signing the goalie coaches to big contracts because they're pretty interchangeable. And I have to offer him a ton of money, her a ton of money, or else she's not going to take that contract because we live in a fantasy crazy world. AHL assistant coach, doesn't really matter much about team fit because there's only like <laughs> only one person's on my team, it says. So whoever is rated the best, uh, whoever is good teaching maybe, they all have C. This guy is B minus. This guy is A for teaching. And he's good for goalies, but he's a D rated coach. But why not? Oh, sorry. She. Uh, Mai Soderstrom. Nice name, Mai. Two year contract. Hopefully she signs on. Uh, check out the scouts. Any cool scouts? Uh, Duchamplain is an A minus QMJHL coach. This guy Glass is an A minus USA coach. All right, so I'm going to see who I can hire and then go fire the people that I want to get out. So this guy's A plus in Central and East and an A minus coach, a scout. So that means you go back to your scouts. This person is a USA East scout, but he is a C rated, so he gets fired and I'll go hire the other guy. But I'm going to go through all my scouts and do that, make sure all of them are at top quality, and then I'll get back in a minute. All right, so that's all done. Let's advance a few days and see if these coaches and these scouts all sign on, especially with Kale McCarr, though. All right, so Carolyn Humphreys is on the team. And uh, my Soderstrom does not like the size of your team's market in San Diego. Well, as a D-rated coach, I'm sure she really has a lot of options. On these scouts sign on, that's good. McKinley and a first for Essa Lindell and Brian Dumoulin. That's a cool offer, but definitely going to reject it. Not going to give up a medium league goaltender and a first round pick just for that. Offered a contract to another AHL goalie coach. Uh, maybe I'll just go with that one. Who knows? It doesn't really matter at all. Uh, another scout signs on. Another scout signs on. Okay. Let's see. See, this is a weird thing. It says Rene Dupont just signed on as a scout. But when I clicked on his name, it brought up Rene de Dupont. But when you look over his name, it says uh, de, de, de Courroyer or something. Uh, whatever. I had mentioned it earlier. Uh, now if I go to QMJHL. Okay, he's not there anymore. So I guess I signed him. It said, it said Rene Dupont. Now if I go to my staff. Here he is, A+, plus, but it was, uh, you saw earlier, when I was looking over the scouts, it said de la something, de, de Cornoyer, or something like that. So his name just, I guess he just changed his name, so good for him. Come on, Kale McCarr. Come on, Kale McCarr. Okay, coach says yes. Come on, Kale McCarr. I'm not going to, why would I do that? Come on, Kale McCarr. Paid a lot of money. Come on, Bello. There we go. Extremely happy to accept your offer. Cash offer is most generous. Welcome back, Kale McCarr. Locked up. Love to see it. Now we need to figure out what is this team looking like with all those pieces signed. What do we need to get in terms of who needs to grow and what do we need to go out and look for. So defense next season, uh, we have one, two, three, four guaranteed. Could be five, six right here if we had to, but we have Ekman and we also, how much cap space do we have now? I have enough to just sign him, I guess. I could give him exactly what he wants. I think I'll try the two years at 2.250. 
and that'll get another defenseman sign. That'll give us one, two, three, four. That'll be five. Maybe I could get a, a third pair defenseman, or maybe a really good second. No, I could get a third pair defenseman. I still have about three million dollars, two, three million dollars to spare. But I do need to sign Pedro Pacioretty, who's our fourth centerman, because one, two, three, and four is Pedro Pacioretty. One, two, three, uh, and then one, two, three, then I need five right wingers. One, two, three, four. So I could use maybe a fourth line right wing. Maybe I could, yeah, I could use a fourth line right wing for real this time, not like last year where I got you all Armia and I didn't end up needing him. Fourth line right wing, maybe a bottom pair D. Malkin's going to be here for a while, I think. Cristiano Ling's in free agency? Yeah, as a restricted free agent, but still. So if I got a right winger, sort by overall, scroll down a little bit. Guy for the fourth line, starting around, let's say around 81. Don't want Shaw. Josh Anderson's interesting with the power forward. He would fit on the third line, it says. 26 points last year with Vegas. Bah. Jakob Silverberg is there as a fourth line. Do I bring back Jakob Silverberg? No, I got, he got his cup, right? With us? 21-22? Yeah, he got his cup with us. We don't need to bring him back. Yoel Armia back in free agency. Okay, maybe I go and get Yoel Armia. He fit really well in our lineup. He has always been a good player. Yeah, I think I'm going to go and get him. Because I could get a guy who's one overall higher. Like this guy. Oh, Nyback's a restricted free agent. I can't get him. I could get Josh Anderson. Cost a little bit more. But I don't know. I like Armia. Anderson only wants one year. I think I have the cap space. Maybe I'll go for Anderson. One year at 1.850. See what he says. And then for Pedro Pacioretty. I could get him at three years, like I said before. Yeah, three years, 1.2. The good thing about... Uh, um, Qualifying is that in free agency they'll take less than what they would have taken on your team. So simulate another few days, say no to all these garbage trade offers, two thirds for two thirds. Uh, Buzik and a first for Essel and Dell and a fifth. Interesting. The, the Dal Dallas definitely made out like bandits on that. Patrick got an uh, offer sheet of two years, 1.4, so I'll go ahead and match that from Vegas. And also Anderson signs, so that's cool. And Ekman signs as well. Perfect. We are all set. Now, if I went back to free agency, it says that I have $2.3 million of cap space, not too much. If I were to sign a bottom pair defenseman, wouldn't be anyone too special. If I went to affordable, uh, it would be Jake the Snake Gardner, legend on the Montreal Canadiens franchise mode, Evan Bouchard, offensive defenseman. Maybe Evan Bouchard wouldn't be the worst. Six foot two, uh, not the craziest numbers. He would fit all of our penalty kill lines. TJ Brody would fit defensive pairing three maybe. I, would, if I need more scouting done on these guys. I don't know enough about them. I don't want to trade for a defenseman. That's a thing. I'd rather just sign one. Evan Bouchard is 10 years younger than TJ Brody. And his numbers are better too. Let's try Evan Bouchard. You know what? He has the potential. Let's try him out. But I'm only going to give you one year, Bello. I'm going to give you one year at $2 million. You have to prove yourself to me. If you want to get another contract on this team, I'm just, you're, you're filling in a little gap. Maybe, who knows, maybe someone grows and they take away your spot. Tori Krug in a sixth to Carolina for our first and a goalie prospect. Wow, Carolina gearing up for another run after they lost in seven to Pittsburgh last year. And Evan Bouchard signs on. Yeah, a likely to be a go-to man. No problem, Evan. You have always been against us in Edmonton, but now you are with us. Let's get you a cup. To clear out the trade block, sim to next season, see what we're looking like. Just trying to dump these guys to Colorado. Uh, four randoms for Lockhart, medium top nine. He was a first round pick, whatever. What do you say, Avalanche? No, not surprised. Forget the prospect. I'll just take back a pick. So I just need to dump these guys to free up some space. Uh, how does a fourth round pick sound? Everyone's going to go dance in the streets. There you go. Go dance in the streets, boys. Now, the issue is we're very close to the cap, and I don't really have enough players in San Diego. I just I dumped some garbage contracts and a couple and like Prick Reel who's making 0.8s on like a one-way deal because he got offered an offer sheet in the offseason. And that's the issue. So looking at the lines right now, I'll show you where I'm at. First line looks like it always does. Tolvin and Wright Pasternak, right is up to an 89 overall. Second line, Helmerson, Morand, and Lindstrom. Helmerson and Morand. Helmerson and Lindstrom are both uh, 89s, which is very nice. 
Third line, Bickle, Bugner, and Sidor. Third line, McKinnis, Pacioretty, and Anderson. So then on the defensive end here, uh, we have Jones, McCarr with the plus three. Clark and Slavin, who's down to an 83, and Bouchard and Ekman on the bottom pair. So Jakob Slavin down to an 83, making 5.15 for the next uh, couple of years is an issue. Now goaltending, Cameron McKinley up to an 83 overall is the starting goalie right now, with Lucas Dosel backing him up at 81. But if you look at the scratches here, Jameson DeVries, who's also another Hungarian, just like the guy we just drafted, Larmour, he is also listed as a starting goalie, 81 overall medium elite. So either I play DeVries with McKinley, or I think I played DeVries with Dostal, because DeVries is the future starting goaltender. So the question is, do I keep Cameron McKinley, who's 24 years old, with medium lead potential, and trade him because he has less value and he's not going to be our starter? Or do I trade Dostal, have McKinley be our starter this season, and then McKinley transfers into a backup role in the future for DeVries? Or does Dostal begin his career as a backup right now for the next maybe three years? He shares time this year with DeVries, and then next year becomes his backup, and so forth. But the, I have a lot of goalies in the system, so I don't think Dostal's going to be around here for a while. Maybe I think I go McKinley with DeVries here, and I move on from Dostal. That'll probably be the course of action, and then DeVries will move into the starter role in the near future. So I could use some depth forward. Noah Gregor is my only depth forward here. Uh, Caden Gooley is my depth defense. He never grew past 79, first round pick in 2020. So maybe I trade Dostal and Slavin to try to free up some space salary cap wise i don't like that i don't know why these guys don't fit on the on this third line maybe i need to change bookner to a playmaker or something with 86 passing between two snipers i guess i'll try that maybe i, tr maybe I should trade maybe i should also change helmerson to a power forward who knows so i'm gonna look, try to change around some player styles work with the plus ones try to play with the with the uh, coaching style see what i can also get for slavin in the trade and then i'll get back to you so I put Jakob Slavin into the trade binder, gives me four deals here. Keatley and a third from the Islanders, Kolosov and a third, uh, Max Pacioretty and two thirds, or Norton and a second. That's interesting, Max Pacioretty and two thirds, but he is making 4.2, so it doesn't really help me out in the cap situation. Uh, he is a 78 overall with HL top six potential. Yeah, would he fit in the fourth line? I don't really think so. So I'm going to pass from that because it doesn't really help me out with my cap situation. The Islanders are offering me a prospect and a third, which was an interesting deal. So maybe I'll go with that. Try to see which one's best. Uh, Keatley and Kolosov, which one is best between those two? Keatley is 77 overall, 21 years old, medium top six. Amari Keatley, that's a good prospect. A good playmaker, second round pick. That would be a good prospect. And then on defense... It's Kolosov. He's 63 overall, 18 years old. No, I, was, wasn't that the guy I was looking at drafting? I was looking at drafting that guy. But this third round, this guy looks a lot better. Keatley, 77 overall, 21 years old. So actually, I think I'm going to do that. Keatley and a third for Jakob Slavin. Velo, I love you. I'm going to miss you. <sighs> Fantastic defensive presence. Always huge year in and year out. But I'm going to have to move on for you, from you for cap reasons. So, and uh, get some good prospect back. So, Bello, I'm glad you have your Stanley Cup. Thank you for all your help here in Anaheim. But I'm going to ship you off, unfortunately, to the New York Islanders. I'm going to get as much as I can for you because you are a very valuable piece. It's a third and a fifth with that prospect. Thank you, New York, and thank you, Slavin. Then my other move is to trade Lucas Dostal here. If I trade Lucas Dostal, uh, I don't know if there's a lot of teams that want a starting goalie. The Toronto Maple Leafs want a starter. Yeah. Do they have any defensemen that I could take back? Maybe just someone on a one-year type of thing before my guys in the minors come up. Ryan Graves is a possibility from Calgary. Defensive defenseman. He's a pretty good... 6'5", uh, he's pretty good in real life. Not that great in the game. He's a one year, 1.895. Wouldn't be a terrible deal. Uh, they don't like that though, obviously. They want more. 
I just want someone who could just fill in because I don't like Caden Gooley being there. I'd rather have someone a bit better. Maybe I call up one of my high seven, like a 78 overall, like Drysdale from the minors, maybe. If I can't get it to pulled off. But either way, I need to trade Dostal. Just that so he doesn't have any trade value. And a fifth. That's a pretty good deal right there. Still no? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just trade him to the Flames straight up. Actually, I'd prefer not to trade him to the Flames because he's obviously going to get like the... He's going to put on a show every year and destroy me in the playoffs. I don't want to trade him to any of my rivals, but that seems like that's the only team. The only team that is in the Eastern Conference is the Leafs. And they would have too many goalies if they gave me Dostal. They have to trade me someone back. So I guess I'll take this guy, Roy. Already he out uh, has more trade value than Dostal, I think. For no reason, he scored... Uh, Dostal made 40 wins last season. Trade accepted. All right, Dostal. Good luck in Toronto over in the Eastern Conference. You have your Stanley Cup ring with you. I wish you all the best, Bello. No. Now I'll go trade that guy for a seventh round pick. Try to sign some of my rookies to entry-level deals. I didn't have enough money to even do that. And then we will see what we're looking like. Oh man, classic EA. So I ended up firing my entire AHL staff. Fire the head coach because the lines just weren't working. They, everyone having negatives, whatever. But then at the same time, it says, oh, you have to promote someone to head coach. But I don't want to promote someone to head coach. I need to promote someone to interim head coach. But it wouldn't give me that option. So I ended up just firing everybody. And even when I try to leave the, the screen now, it still won't let me. It says I have to go hire an AHL. Uh, make someone an AHL head coach. So I guess I'll make Humphreys my AHL head coach But then by doing that it's going to when I try to hire this coach It's gonna say oh, sorry the spots already filled So that is such a big buzz. I hate it. Let me advance a few days. Yeah, San Diego fired their coaches, whatever And to see if these guys yeah, this is their spots already filled. Sorry Gaspar Sauvé who I tried to sign now I gotta go back to coaching, hire staff, and do another huge process in this broken garbage system. Right, so I'll work on this behind the scenes while I continue simulating through the preseason, but for now I'm going to, I'll just show, I'll show that to you once it's done. But for now, let's go back to the lines. So with changing Bugner to a playmaker, uh, like that, and by changing Jesper Helmerson to a power forward, I get a plus one on the second line with Bickel up there, and I get a plus three if I bring Helmerson down to the third line. So plus one's over here, plus three's over here, which is better than three one one one. It goes three one three one. So I think we're in a roll like that to begin the season. Let me know your thoughts on it on that. If you like it, defense, Jones, McCarr, Ekman, Clark, Gooley, Bouchard. Not a fan of that. If I put Gooley up with Clark, it gives plus ones like that. Not a fan, really, to be honest. I'd prefer uh, Bouchard or Ekman up there, but it keeps it at zero if I do it. So Gooley goes second pair with Clark. Really not too comfortable with that. Maybe I call up someone from the minors. And in goal, it is Cameron McKinley, backed up by Jameson DeVries. Scratched, I have Noah Gregor. I could really use someone better. In the AHL, I need to fix the coach, so things, aren't, things are going to change once the coaches change. But uh, Drysdale, Aho, all these guys, Larmour, maybe I could call up Jamie Drysdale or even Aho. Marco Aho could play top 60. Yeah, that's true. I think I'll call up Marco Aho instead. And uh, we'll go from there. So right now, we're just going to start simulating and things are going to change over the next few days once I sign and trade and all this stuff with coaches and call up, send down free agents if there's anybody. So I'll check in once I start to figure that out and we will begin simulating through the preseason. All right, so I think everything's figured out now. Marco Aho is going to play up with Brant Clark. I like him a bit more than Gooley in two games is negative two in the preseason or whatever, but he can be interchangeable with Gooley. I'm not gonna be afraid to take him out and put Gooley in when needed. And I won't be afraid to forfeit that plus one on the second pair so as to get the, the right player in there. Also signed Julien Gauthier for good depth he's six foot four power forward he's gonna be good to play on the fourth line for any injuries that means I send Gregor back down to the minors lines look like this with all the new coaches uh, Larmour can play top minutes with Berglund Drysdale never really seemed to grow so that's pretty disappointing I'm gonna put him on the block Bednar with Antonovic uh, backing him up there so that's pretty much it. I'm going to update the trade block here, uh, which will just take me a quick second. And there we go. So Gooley, Aho, Drysdale all on the block. I want a top four defenseman, first, second, third, all that good stuff. So hopefully that'll send me some good offers. Um, browsing through the block quickly, I want to see if there's any top four D that I could go ahead and nab, potentially in the near future. 
Jordan Schmaltz, no. Cam Fowler's here, two years left at 4.8. So originally he signed with Philadelphia to that two-year $4.825 million contract, but then he got traded to Colorado. So Gesslaff told him good things about Philadelphia. He signed there, but then he got traded to Colorado. He's reunited with his former D partner, Hampus Lindholm, which is a pretty cool turn of events to have Fowler and Lindholm back together. So they are both on the block. Uh, so is Petrangelo. Bit way, actually way too expensive though for what I would be looking for for this season. Will Butcher is an interesting option. A lot of timeless not a contract though. Maybe Shane Gostas there would be more of a realistic option. Oilers are try starting to liquidate people. All mark on the block of course. Victor Hedman, uh, Brendan Dillon, another interesting option there. Jonas Brodeen, Nick Letty, uh, Pacioretty's there on the block. So those are some possible Jet Wu, bah. Those are some possible possible people, Jones, Myers, yeah. So those are some possible options moving into next season uh, for defense. Let's finish off the simulation of the preseason and see how we do. So through seven games in the preseason, we finish with a record of 5-2-0. and oh, pretty, uh, pretty average as usual. Seven points, sorry, 11 points in seven games for Kale McCarr, our leading scorer, worth all that money, I really hope. Jesper Helmerson got 10 points out on the third line. Bugner with nine, Morand eight. Lindstrom, the first, the first line barely did anything. Where's the first line? Wright, Tolvanen, and Pasternak combined for four points and a negative six in seven games. So that's really weird, but I'm going to just chalk that up to it being the preseason and not really mattering. Goalie situation, McKinley went 5-1-0. That's nice. Not great numbers, but as, we've saw, as we saw last season, numbers don't really matter too, too much as long as the team is getting it done. DeVries had one game. Decent numbers there for him. Also, we're about to take a look at the power play. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing that I forgot about. The power play line. So try to get the maximum plus. It would look something like this. We'll try this. Pasternak, Moran, Lindstrom. I like giving Moran that top line minutes because he's a good playmaker and it allows him to get more ice time and get a lot of points. Uh, right can play on the second pair with Sidor, Helmerson, Bickle, Jones, Makar, Tolvin, and Lindstrom up here on the first pair. So that's pretty nice with the plus three. Pasternak's playing like a 96 there. Lindstrom playing like a 92. Makar 94. Only well, we can get a plus one on the second pair. I think it's due to uh, Bickle and Jones not really fitting it. Jones doesn't really fit at all, but he's a monster and I'm going to keep him there because that gives him a 90 overall as a good offensive defense, with a two-way defense with good offensive stats. Penalty kill is a different story. We're probably going to look something like this. I've never tried this, but I think I'm going to try Pasternak on the penalty kill. He has really good defensive numbers. Not good shot blocking, but good stick checking and defensive awareness. There's no plus ones anywhere here. I could put like a McInnes here and it would give it a plus three, but then Pat, it only gives them 83-83 because they're only 80 overalls to begin with. So I'm going to try it out like that where no one has a plus. Jake Sidor doesn't really fit. Joey Anderson doesn't fit. Uh, Josh Anderson doesn't fit. Uh, Bickle does fit. We would we'll give it a plus one, but his defensive numbers aren't as good as Pacioretty's. That's still pretty good. Uh, as a uh, Pasternax, I mean. <sighs> Doug, I guess I gave him power play. Uh, penalty kill time. He's listed as a first line forward. The person I feel bad for is Sidor. Uh, but you know what? Let's try it like that. We'll try Bickle, actually, on the special teams. Like always, we're going to play it by ear and see what happens. Aho is only here because he fits. But do I really want a 79 overall here? No, I'd rather have Brant Clark. What am I saying? Put Brant Clark, but then still... Is, okay, great. Right, Helmerson, Clark, Makar, Pacioretty, Bickle, Ekman, Jones. Let's see how that works, and we'll go from there. Why is McKinnis here? He's not even a centerman. 78 faceoffs? Yeah, I guess he could, but still, negative one? Why would I put him there? If I swap Jones out and put Evan Bouchard on the penalty kill, it gives it a plus one. Keeps it a plus one, though, right? Uh, yeah, okay, so no point doing that. But yeah, three-man penalty kill. This is always a buzz. Uh, Shane Wright makes it a uh, negative two, which I don't want. How about Christian Bugner? He makes it a negative three, which is even worse. And I can't play Pedro Pacioretty on both lines. Uh, I guess I'll put Jesper Helmerson because at least he keeps it a negative one and uh, negative three. Great. All right. So I guess Jordan McInnes is going center on the penalty on the three-man penalty kill, which doesn't make any sense. And we'll go from there. Maybe I could switch Jones with Ekman. Yeah. There you go. Zero and zero. It's like a need, you need a really, you really, really, really need a doctorate's degree to be able to work this thing. Extras, whatever. Keep it like always. Goalies, McKinley gets the season starter. Scratch, Gautier, Gouli. Great. Okay, those will be the lines to start the season. That was a big buzz. So that was a trade block before 
Uh, if I advance to the beginning of next season now, I can assign my scouts, which I will do as soon as I end off this episode. But if I went to the trade finder, I just want to see what kind of offer I would get if I were to try and move a defenseman for someone who could be in my top four. Like if I were to say, be interested in moving Caden Gooley, I don't think I'd be able to get much for him as opposed to Marco Ajo. I'd probably be able to get more for him. 18, I could get a second and a prospect type of thing. Two thirds, nothing really that good. But if I were to trade Marco Ajo, who could actually just be trade bait, Gooley stays a scratch, and then Aho becomes someone, uh, turns into a piece that comes into our defense. Yeah, it's 34 offers. I could get a first. Let me just sift through these quickly. Yeah, so I don't believe any of these offers include NHL defensemen except like Caleb Jones. The rest are good draft picks and prospects. It would be, I get a good amount for Marco Aho, but it wouldn't be what I'm looking for. I want someone who could play on defense, but I guess I'll just have to make do with what I have there. So I think that's it for this one, boys. It was a good off season, I think. The team is looking good. It was a good draft with Larmour and everybody. So I'm gonna send out the scouts to begin, but for next episode, we are going to go through the entire year number eight, 2026, 2027 simulation. So let me know any of your thoughts on the goaltending, the defense, the forwards, pieces that need to move, people who need to be traded because next year extensions are coming in for Sidor and Bickle. I have $7 million of extension and that covers maybe one of them. So we're gonna have to make moves at either the deadline this season or the beginning of the end of this season, the end, the start of next season, something. So please, as always, let me know your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Why not? I've been pumping out a lot of episodes. I see you watching these. Hit that subscribe button to let me know that you're liking it and it'll get in your uh, little YouTube algorithms and you'll get some more stuff from me. So hit that button. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.